Lita has done it all in the WWE, going from being the biggest female babyface on the roster when working with the Hardy Boys and utilising the crowd-popping combination of acrobatics and thongs, all the way to being the biggest heel, drawing nuclear heat after cheating on Matt Hardy with Edge. She's a four-time women's champion and a Hall of Famer, and she's missed. But it hasn't all been golden. I'm Adam from WhatCulture.com, and here are 10 things WWE want you to forget about Lita. Number 10, showing a boob on Raw. Ah, the live sex celebration. Now, this was originally going to be number one because it's two people having sex on air in a bed surrounded by thousands of people who just did not know what to do with themselves. But actually, it ranks low on the list because it's just so compellingly strange that the WWE don't actually want you to forget about it all that much. It was featured on the most recent episode of Network Exclusive Jerry Springer's Too Hot for TV, and Edge even mentioned it in his retirement speech. However, what WWE definitely want you to forget Get, is that Lita's boob was briefly on display during the segment. Now, as we all know, female breasts are the devil and must be scrubbed from our TVs with bleach. Remember the public sex, everybody, but don't you dare remember the nipple. Number six, she debuted in ECW. Now, this is perhaps something that younger fans won't know, but Lita didn't debut with the Hardy Boys. She didn't even debut with S.A. Rios, the red-headed dude that no one remembers. In fact, Lita's debut working for a major promotion was with ECW, Lita Kinranering dudes for Paul Heyman way before she was doing it for Vince. In 1999, she made her first appearance as Miss Congeniality, the girlfriend of Danny Doring, who looks like Owen Hart's frat boy brother. She then wrestled as Angelica, even getting elbow dropped through a table by Sabu. Now, she was part of the original Team Extreme. But this isn't a blot on her career, don't think of it like that. But WWE like to think that they discover all their talent, so they prefer you to think of her as Lita and nothing else. Number eight, she was a hoe. Choo choo, all aboard the hoe train. Now, as you know, the Godfather would comport himself with a traveling harem of ladies who didn't mind appearing in front of a live crowd dressed as actual literal hookers. The first appearance by Lita in the WWE? Yep, she was one of the scantily clad babes that Godfather would offer to people in exchange for money and favours. Now call me crazy, but I don't think this was part of her Hall of Fame induction package. Number seven, being fired by Bischoff. In 2002, Lita cracked several vertebrae in her neck whilst filming Dark Angel, AKA Powerless in Seattle. Whilst recuperating, Lita stuck around on TV, even acting as female commentator on Sunday Night Heat. Months before she was set to make her return to in-ring competition in order to keep her off TV in order to give her a big boost on returning, Lita was kayfabe fired from the WWE by Eric Bischoff, the Cheshire cat from Alice in Wonderland, crossed with Tom Cruise's pervert cousin. Now that's fair enough, good way to get heat on Bischoff and way for Lita to disappear, except what he fired her for, which was refusing to follow in Tori Wilson's footsteps and pose nude for Playboy. Wow. Okay, there's being a bad boss, and then there's firing someone for exercising autonomy over their body. That would not be okay today, and should have been okay back then. Number six, the Mickey James angle was originally written for Lita. Remember the Mickey James Trish Stratus stalker angle? It was pretty darn good. Sure, it was a bit sexy, crazy women are sexy, but it made a star out of James, made Trish look good, and gave us one of the best women's matches in WrestleMania history, botched ending aside. It went so well, in fact, that WWE would like you to forget it was originally written for Lita. It kind of makes more sense. Mickey James looks a bit more like Lita. The two were already good friends prior to James coming to the WWE. But at the last moment, Lita was replaced after, well, she got a little busy in late 2005 dealing with a certain affair being made public. Number five, she was supposed to win the title at WrestleMania 21. Lita versus Trish is probably the best women's rivalry in WWE history at least until the four horsewomen make themselves comfortable on the main roster. The feud was so hot that in December 2004, the two ladies did what no women had ever done before, they main evented Raw. On that night, Lita beat Trish Stratus for her women's title one-on-one. -on -one. Trish then won it back at New Year's Revolution in January, and the stage was set for the feud to be blown off in grand fashion at WrestleMania 21 with Lita going over. Unfortunately, Lita tore the ACL in her left knee at Revolution, sidelining her for Mania, which is tragic because after all the hard work that both women had put in, they never got their one-on-one -on -one match at WrestleMania. It would have been an absolute barnstormer and perhaps it'll be less painful to just forget all about what could have been. Number four, crime time selling her pants. Mickey James did get her feud with Lita eventually, but she had to wait till later in the year. At Survivor Series 2006, Lita was the women's champion and announced that her match against Mickey James was to be her retirement match. Now, normally when a superstar retires from active competition, especially one as beloved as Lita used to be, it's in a tearful ceremony or an emotional speech or a standing ovation. Not so for Lita. She was still the slattern heel that she'd become after her relationship with Matt Hardy fell apart, so she was utterly humiliated on her way out. 
After being beaten by Mickey James, out came Crime Time, who are two black people thugs who committed crimes. That's a whole lot to unpack right there, we don't have the time. They had a box of her bras and panties and began to sell it to the public as Lita freaked out in the ring. They let JBL sniff her pants before he bought them and they even sold her treatment cream for a yeast infection. Wow, thank you for your long years of service and good luck with all your future endeavors. Yikes. Number three, she was beaten up by men all the time. It's a point we've made before in these videos, but man on women violence is a huge no-no in today's PG era WWE. It cannot happen, it will not happen. But in the Attitude Era, they could fit all the craps they gave about that into a thimble. Not only was Lita 3 D'd several times by the Dudley, she was put through tables, speared by Edge, and in a segment that's really quite uncomfortable today, beaten up by Steve Austin and Triple H. Not only was she given the pedigree, but Austin hit her with a stunner and with a chair nine times bloody nine that's savage that's randy savage it was a different time number two being raped by kane oh okay so uh kane Remember him? Big bald man, snarling, looks like a crazy pickled egg. Well, his storyline with Lita was the worst. The worst. Kane kidnapped her because stealing ladies is a fun day at the office, it seems. He threatened to murder her boyfriend, Matt Hardy, unless she submitted to his horrible, horrible desires. A few weeks later, it's revealed that Lita is pregnant and Kane is the father. So, Kane impregnated Lita against her will, then he married her, again against her will. And at this stage, I should really point out that the E in WWE stands for entertainment. I'm just going to say that and move quickly on. Number one, the miscarriage. Oh no, 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 I wanted to move quickly on. Okay, so Lita is kayfabe pregnant by this point, married to a man who kidnapped her and slept with her under duress. Then Snitsky gets involved. Doesn't he look cuddly in the head? Snitsky hits Kane with a chair and he falls on Lita, which we're later told caused her to miscarry. I mean, what do you say to that? Mummy, what's a miscarriage? But at least Snitsky got a it wasn't my fault catchphrase out of it. Haha, <laughs> it wasn't his fault. Lol. And then Lita fell in love with Kane for beating up Snitsky, rewarding the kidnapper and rapist. And this is just so utterly screwed up, it's pretty much a waste of time to even try and unpack it. So instead, here's Snitsky punting a doll which was supposed to represent Lita's unborn child. WWE. Hooray. And that's our list. Did we miss any out? Tell us about it in the comments and don't forget to like, share and subscribe and you can even follow me on Twitter here. I'm Adam from whatculture.com and I'll see you soon.